All right, good evening, everybody. This is Friday, July 31st, 2020. Hopefully, if people are watching this video in the future, say six months or a year from now, this will be remembered as the coronavirus, coronavirus times or the COVID-19 times or whatever we're going to call it. But I know there's hundreds, probably, if not thousands of videos out there already on this thing, but I thought I would throw my little video into the ring as well. This is the Under Armour sports mask. Now, I ordered this, I believe it was the same day they were released, but it was that afternoon, and they've been on order for a while. I wasn't supposed to get it until August the 13th, I believe, and it showed up on my front porch today, so I was happy about that. But what this is, is obviously it's a mask designed to... Um, be a facial covering during these troubling times. I've already had it out of the package. My wife and I both got one. This is hers. And so far, I'm impressed with it. A couple of little things about it I wasn't crazy about, but I think it's going to work out pretty good. I will say this. It's definitely the best non-medical mask that I've seen during all this craziness. Uh, and to be honest with you, for 30 bucks, which is what these cost, it darn well better be. So... <laughs> But uh, anyway, let's take a look. Uh, let's take some close-up looks here of the packaging. It's clearly states non-medical, non-PPE. The reason they have to do that is because if the if this was a mask designed for medical use, it would have to meet FDA approval. It would have to come from FDA registered and approved factories, and it would have to be on the list of FDA approved PPE mask. Um, the company I work with, we import a lot of PPE stuff, and. Let me just say it's been a nightmare since this thing has all started, but we'll take a look at the back. And you can see she opted for the large, extra large size. And I will say this, on the sizing, both of us measured according to the Under Armour website, which you measure from the bridge of your nose to the middle of your ear and you take that dimension, and that's what you order your mask off of. And I will say that we these both fit us perfectly, actually. I'm, I'm very surprised that, uh, you know, I was worried mine might be a little bit small or a little bit big because I had to get the double X. I'm a big guy, obviously. But, yeah, let's take, the, let's take a look at this. And like I said, this has been open already, but I tried to put this back in here just like they were when it came out of the package. And this is what you get inside of it. You get the mask itself, and you get a nice little carrying case with a small insert card that we'll take a look at the insert card first. And basically it's giving you graphical illustrations. Wash your hands first before you remove the mask from the bag and how to put it on. It says when you take the mask off, it does clearly say on here to wash it then wash your hands, and then it has the illustration putting the mask back into the bag. And there's nothing on the flip side. This bag is pretty nice, but I'll be honest with you, um, looking at this illustration on how to fold it up, uh, I think it'd be hard fit. Maybe it goes in there like this. I don't know. I'll let someone else figure that part out. But it is a nice little bag. It's kind of like the, um, it reminds me of the Oakley sunglass bags. It has a little drawstring with a little squeeze caliper on it. Another nice thing is, is the mask, it has a spot on the bag. It says the size and it has a spot that you can write down a number. And then there's also a number spot inside the mask, which we'll show here in a second. But this is what the front of the mask looks like. And then we see the inside. Now, one thing I do kind of think is pretty cool, this area in here that has the little polka dots kind of on it is actually pretty thick. I mean, I almost describe it as a, a batting type material, like a quilted material. And you can see they have it sewn in the inside to where there's minimal fabric wrinkles 
where it doesn't bunch up on your face. And when you're wearing this, which I'll show myself wearing this, I know you guys are gonna love that here in a minute, it, it stands up off your face. And on the edges, they have kind of like, um, kind of like the Under Armour material that the Under Armour makes their, shor their uh, shir shirts out of. Stretchy fabric that goes around the edges. And then between the top, on the top layer here, you can see this little stitch line. There's a piece of wire of some sort in here that you can bend and adjust around your face as necessary. Now, that's one of my gripes. I kind of wish this wire was a little bit stronger. This feels almost like... Uh, almost like a bread tie, a twist tie that you have on a loaf of bread maybe or something. But I mean, it's stronger than that, but let me here, I'll show you right here. I mean, it's okay. And I do know that, and I'll show this when I'm fitting my mask on my face, and I hope it retains its strength for 30 bucks. I'm hoping this is a mask I can wear for quite a while. But on the inside, you'll note it has again, another spot to put a number so if you have multiple masks, you can put a number for each one or put someone's name, like Joe's mask or Mike's mask or whoever. And then of course you have your little terror tags, care tags on here. By law, they have to put this on here and let me see if I can get a close up of that. There we go. And on the flip side, we have some care instructions. you have a small little uh, barcode then you've got lot numbers and all that for the manufacturer date of it so the wire is the one thing that I wasn't too impressed with I mean I think it will suffice but I was kind of hoping it would be something more sophisticated and the ear loops are kind of odd they're they're not finished on the edges of the material. It's just thin cuts of the same type of uh, material, which I believe they actually describe it on here. Next to skin, ISO chill fabric on interior lining and ear loops. So this is probably what they call the next to skin ISO chill fabric. At first, when I first saw this, I was like, man, that's kind of uh, chintzy. You know, it just like, um, just like a cutout, but it does have some stretchability to it and it actually works pretty good for what it's supposed to do. So again, we'll take a quick pan around, look at this, and then we'll show you all my ugly mug wearing one of these. Okay, stand by for a quick shot of me putting one of these puppies on. <laughs> All right, y'all, my dog is gently knocking at the door trying to get in here. So if you hear a little bit of scratch or not, <laughs> it's him trying to come in. But yeah, here we go. Excuse me. And like I said, on mine, I did order the um, extra large, extra, extra large size because it's the biggest size they had. And when I measured, I was right at seven inches. And this size was for seven inches and above. So yeah. The way it works, you just basically put it on. I can't see nothing. That's a joke. <laughs> but yeah, you put it on, kind of get your ear loops adjusted, and then you mold the nose around your nose, just like any other, uh, like a procedure mask, a three-ply procedure mask or something along those lines. Now, obviously, I don't know if you all have noticed this or not, I have a beard, <laughs> so the mask is going to sit on top of it, and that's one thing. I, I really don't want to shave my beard. Normally when I go anywhere, if I go put someplace in public that has a lot of people, like a Walmart or a Sam's Club, I'll wear an N95 mask. And it's a, it's a Moldex non-valved N95 mask. And the reason I like those is because they suck to my face because they're so tight. I can feel the restriction on the air when I'm wearing one of those. Now with this one, I can feel some air restriction. So that tells me, yes, it is working, but I can also feel around my nose right here, 
a little bit of air coming through there. And let me do an extra gripe a lot of people have about masks. They fog up their glasses. I'm getting fog. So that means that air is slipping out the top of the mask right here. Let me show you the rest of the fit. I hope that's picking me up. If it's not picking me up, hey, I apologize. All right, I am smiling underneath this mask. I don't know if you can tell or not, but let's wrap this up. Overall, I would give this probably on an Amazon review, three and a half, maybe four stars. We'll see how it goes with me wearing it for a few days to see how I like it. Um, I do wish the nose wire was a little bit stronger. Um, if that's something that is problematic for that, I might see if my wife can modify this and put it in a heavier nose piece or something along those lines. And um, like I said, I, yeah, it is fogging up my glasses. Now, if I were to press this down, no fog. It's obviously because the seal is not strong enough around the nose. And it may just be me with a, a, a big odd shaped nose or something like that. I, I don't know for sure. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, like I said, three and a half, four stars out of five. I wish I had a stronger nose wire. I kind of would like to see a little bit better system for the loops. Not that this is going to fail, but I don't know. Let me know what your thoughts are. Please take the time to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will say this, let me throw this in there right here at the last. When I am wearing this, I can tell I am definitely getting some filtration because it's harder to breathe. And, and for me, that's a good indicator that the mask is working when it's a little bit harder for you to breathe. Now, is it as restrictive as an N95 that I normally wear? No, it's not. But yeah, thanks for watching. Again, I appreciate you taking the time to click on this video. And again, like, comment, subscribe. Have a great day.